Welcome to the 2022 Young Alumni Challenge Selection Show. We're coming to you live from the fifth floor lecture hall. I'm James Kennedy, and here with me is Young Alumni Challenge superfan, Mr. Eric D. McKelly. Coach, welcome. Thank you, James. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here, and, I, and I'm, I'm really sorry Pablo Torre couldn't make it, but I'm here instead. Well, you know, we invited John Chiambi too, and, and neither of them can make it, so. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay, I don't mind being the third choice. I think <laughs> it it's gonna work out well. Let's start out with some housekeeping about our challenge. Uh, we want to brief the group on a change we've made to our seating. In the past, we had just seated classes randomly, but we decided to be much more strategic this year, and we collected from the dean's office some historic records, and we've seated your classes based on how much jug you received as Regian. So we can let you sort out whether you had more or less jug than your first round matchup. We'll, we'll leave that to you all. But in all seriousness, the most important thing that matters here, gentlemen, is participation. And the class that has the best particip participation rate in each round will advance to the next round. And we look forward to naming a winner. That winner will have their names emblazoned in a plaque in the development office and, of course, bragging rights for eternity, not to mention a young alumni barbecue that will take place in the quad this summer, which we very much look forward to hosting. All the gifts that you make during the Young Alumni Challenge benefit the annual fund. And on behalf of Mr. D. McKelly, myself, all the noble hearts here on 84th Street, we thank you in advance for your generosity, helping to keep Regis tuition free. You can make a gift now. Uh, you can Venmo at Regis High School, uh, or you could go online to regis.org slash give. And again, we're looking forward to this challenge and we're grateful for your support. And James, if I may add one more thing, eternity, guys, is a long time. Let's dive into some analysis and predictions. So coach, this is the first year without the class of 2005 legends of this competition, but there are other strong veteran groups returning. For example, 2016 is a class that I'm keeping my eye on, as well as the class of 2006, a strong group that got narrowly knocked out in the first round last year. How about you? I don't know, James. I think those are the easy favorites. I'm going to go with something even more bold. I think the class of 2018 is going to win. Okay, I know there are naysayers out there that said, hey, these guys really were awful last year. But they are well positioned this year. They lulled people into a false sense of security. They were very strategic in their giving. Okay, they weren't going to give a lot of money. They just wanted to make sure that people didn't understand that we're going to come back big time the next year. This is also the group, by the way, I might point out, that started the club at Regis dedicated to effective altruism and that was Justin Portella and Aiden O'Gara. We're gonna test just how effective their altruism is. I will look up effective altruism later uh, so I can learn what that is, and uh, I appreciate that bold prediction and hope that you're right. Let's go to the matchups. First up, we have the number one seed, 2007 taking on the class of 2009. 07 is a powerhouse and always at or near the top of the table while 09 is led by Austin Mukatov and Patrick Fasano, both formidable veterans of the tournament. I'm not sure what the class of 09 did to get all that jug, though, but I am intrigued. And I have something to say about Austin Mukatov, all right? If you get him talking about Lebanon, he'll forget how many checks he's writing in the meantime. We will keep that fundraising strategy in mind. Uh, I will have to lean on my research team for, for more facts about Lebanon, but that, that's, that's good advice. Next up is the class of 2019 versus 2018. Though both classes are still in college, they've shown a lot of promise. In fact, in the class of 2019, Felipe Santa Maria was so passionate about raising money for Reach and Regis that he rode his bicycle from New York City to Cornell University in Ithaca, New York in one fell swoop. That's 250 miles to raise money for the school. So 2019 certainly has a leader amongst them. On the 2018 side, I've gotten a few messages from guys who are graduating in the, in the spring, um, kind of bragging about the signing bonuses they, that they've received at consulting firms and investment banks. So I think 2018 might have their own advantage. They have something else going for them. They're the 100th anniversary class of the first class at Regis, okay? And the real question is, is the foundress on the side of the class of 2018? I like to think that the foundress is on the side of all, all alumni and Regis people, but I suppose this challenge will bear out the truth there. Then we have the class of 2012 versus 2014, a matchup of John Boletta and Luke Passanante here, two of the best class fund chairs in the field. Should be an impressive Venmo game. You know, the other thing I want to point about 
uh, point out about the class of 2012 is that last year they made it to the faithful four, but more importantly than that, they were the actual Jaspers for the class of 2014. That's an enormous psychological advantage. They know all of the weaknesses of these guys, and these guys still revere them as their former Jaspers. So let's see what happens with that. Our next matchup are the classes of 2015 versus 2011. Since the guys in 2011 were my first students, I've got to pick them. I will never forget the day that Neil Hannon, as a freshman in my class, corrected my understanding of Greek mythology and was right. That's okay, James. J uh, Neil may have been right, but the class of 2015 has Chris Hillenbrand in it, okay? And I think every single member of that class is invested in Chris's brain, okay? Which means that they're gonna be enormously successful in life because of that. I expect them to raise a significant amount of money. The other thing they have going for them is that wonderful Williams backcourt of Mintron and Brady Cueto, both writers who I'm pretty sure are committed to giving all of their royalties to Regis. Next up, is 2013 versus 2006. And again, I have to lean towards former students in the class of 2013. This group is led by Giancarlo Jambrone, and they're a group on the rise, so we should all watch out for them. I'm gonna go with my sentimental attachment to the class of 2006. This is my last freshman history class that I taught at Regis. You had Mike Mitchell, you had Jerry Vitiello, also known as Jerry Veal, Joey Primavera, Joey Springtime, Chris Bandera, Mike Zukowski, Mikey Z. Okay, these guys know how to bring it. This is the group that read O Jerusalem, a 600 page book on the Middle East in three weeks and bought a t-shirt that said, I survived O Jerusalem. Okay, the other thing I might point out, Mike Mitchell, very funny guy, has already been best man at five weddings in his year. I don't think you'd be that friendly with that many people. I think they're exploiting him, but you can exploit him as well. He'll do it for free for you. In the next matchup, we have the newcomers, our graduates from the class of 2021, up against 2017. The guys from 2017 made a surprise run to the Faithful Four last year, so you've gotta figure they're gonna be hard to beat here. I'm not so sure. Uh, you got this class of 21. Remember what college freshmen are like. They think they know everything, and maybe they do. But I should point out that the one Rhodes Scholar from Regis, Brian Reyes, is in the class of 2017. Next up, we have 2016 versus 2008. 2008 is traditionally a very strong class, but 16 has two things going for them. First, they finished a, a close second in the finals last year, and moreover, Coach, they're amassing some sort of inside squad here at Regis. We've got John Morin in the development office, Prince Hunt working for the REACH program, Jeffrey Sulaveras working for UN Admissions, and? And Vincenzo Guido, the Hearn assistant. And in addition to that, they have the famous Johnny Rendon, and here's the other thing, as a sweetener to the class of 2016, we're gonna, they have Angelo D'Angelo, and if they come in first, you're gonna get to give him a middle name. Last but not least, we have a matchup between the class of 2020 and the class of 2010. And I've got to say, the guys from 2020 made it through a pandemic. Uh, they had two graduations, virtual and in person, more than a year apart. So they're a pretty scrappy group, Coach. They are, but you, you know, the class of 2010 has some really good trash talkers. You got Mike Bart, you got Mark Andrioli, you got Shane Mangan. Okay, that's going to be valuable in this competition. The other thing they have, by the way, the class of 2010, four years with John Donadale, the ultimate trash talker. All right, so we have a great tournament ahead of us. It's now time for final predictions. Who will take home the crown this year? I'll go first, and I said it earlier, I, I like the class of 2013. I think these young men are gonna pool all of their Bitcoin and take home the crown. You know, James, I had originally said the class of 2018, and I'm praying for them. I hope they can come through, all right? But I think I'm going to go with the old guys, the class of 2006. This is their last year of eligibility, okay? They're going to go out with a bang. So the class of 2006, let's do it. There you have it. You heard it here first, folks. We'll see how this tournament plays out. Uh, March Magis, the first round, ends on March 15th. Make your gifts by then to help your class advance, and may ours be the noble heart.